Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, software engineer and entrepreneur, and in this video, we will be learning about behaviors in Xamarin Forms. Now, what is a behavior? A behavior is a self-contained, reusable piece of functionality that you can attach to a specific control. So you can think of it as a, as a piece of code behind that you attach to a particular control, like an entry or a button in Xamarin Forms. Now this will effectively extend the behavior of that control, hence they're called behaviors. So let's go right into it. So we have an, right now we have a label and an entry in a stack layout in our content page. And for our entry, we want the entry to validate the input to accept only a double, only numbers, for example. So for example, if you're typing char characters, it, it will be red, for example, if it's not a number. Only if it's a number, you will get the default color, the text color for that entry. So let's go ahead and create our behavior. So here I, I already have, for the structure, I already have my views and my view models folder, pretty standard, and I have a behaviors folder that I've created here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new class. And this, we're, we are going to call this class numeric validation behavior. Now this, this class will inherit from behavior of T, where T is, is, is the generic type, which is your Xamarin Forms view. So in this case, we're, using, we're going, going to be adding this behavior to an entry. So as you can see here, it's strongly typed. Now we need to bring in the Xamarin Forms namespace. Okay, we don't actually need the constructor. So we actually need to override two methods here. So the first method we need to override is onAttach2. And here we have two different ones. So we'll use this one, the entry, the en entry one. And we'll also override, the, and by the way, this on attached to is going to be called whenever this behavior is attached to the, con to the entry control. So we need to override also on detaching from, and this is to perform some kind of some cleanup whenever the this behavior is removed from the behaviors collection. So every Xamarin Forms view has a behaviors collection, okay? So here, like I so we want to hook into the text changed event of the entry. So here, and on attached to, we are going to say bindable, which is our entry instance here, dot text change. This is an event. So we are going to assign an event handler. Let's just call it this one, the default bindable text changed here. And for on detaching from, we want to do a cleanup. So we want to say bindable dot text changed, and then minus equal, so we want to remove this bindable dot text changed. Here we go. And now here in our actual event uh, event handler here for this text changed event in the entry. So every time you type into this entry control, this uh, event handler will be called. So here I'm going to create a local variable, type double, I'm gonna call it result. And then I'm going to create a Boolean, is valid, let's call it. And I'm going to assign Double dot try parse because we're going to try to parse the this input in our in our entry. Try parse, and then we're going to to grab e dot new text value, and then out just the result here. So now, so we have our our sender here, which we know is an entry. So let's go ahead and cast it. Entry, and let's actually add another parenthesis here so we can access one of its members. Entry here so the text so we're going to change the text color based on the input text color assign so we're going to grab this is this valid boolean so if it's true if it's valid is true then we're going to do color dot default for the text color and if it's false if it's valid is false then we're going to do color dot red okay so actually let's go let's go back to the XAML here we have our entry so like i said entry has a behaviors collection here. And here we are going to add our, our behavior. And I already added the namespace, the behaviors namespace. So we need to say behaviors. And then we're, we're going to add the class that we just created, numeric validation behavior. Let's, let's go ahead and close it. And let's go ahead and run this app and let's see what we get. So we, what we would expect to get is an entry that every time you tap this text change event is called and based on whether the this new text value is a double then the color of the text will default if it's not let's say for example there's a letter 
or some kind of a special character or something that is not a double, then the color, the text color will be red. So here it's coming up in our iPhone X. Uh, so let's go ahead and start typing. So for example, if we say 34.6, that's a double, so it works. Now, but if we do, for example, technical founder, you see it's red because it's not a double. So it's very interesting. We have extended the behavior, the functionality of this entry control in a self-contained way. And for example, if you type a number 435 and then a character, again, the, the, cha the text changes color. And now this behavior is reusable. So this class, we can attach it to other entries in different parts of your application because you can ask this, what we're doing here, this uh, text change event and this handler, could we not do this in the code behind file for our page? And the answer is yes, you could. However, if we're following object-oriented programming best principles, if, if we consider that an object should be responsible for itself, whose job is it to change the text color of an entry? It's the entry itself. Of course, you can do this in the code behind, but then you're giving that job of changing a control's text color to the page. So that, it's, that doesn't really... Uh, makes sense. I mean, you can do it, but again, best pr best practice, best principles is to actually have an object be responsible for itself. So this would be the best practice, and you're not bloating your code behind file for your page with a di with just some um, functionality for a particular control on that page. You see, your code be code behind is cleaner. In this case, it's just initialize component call here, and just the code is much cleaner, easier to maintain. And again, this is a reusable uh, behavior that you can use in different pages for for other entry entry controls. So very nice. Now, um, well, I'm going to show you one more really cool thing that you can do um, with, with behaviors. It's one of my favorite things about behaviors. And you, for example, for a control that doesn't have a command, you can use a behavior to have to make it have a command. So for a, a, um, an entry does not have a command by itself. So we want to actually create a command property for our behavior. So inside your behavior, you can actually define bindable properties. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and create a bindable property. Pretty standard, public, static, read-only, bindable property. And we're going to call this command property. And then assigns, and then we're going to say bindable uh, property dot create. And then we're uh, here. We're going to we're going to use a name of operator just so we get a clean refactorings command. And it's thinking it's the class, but I'm going to I'm going to create an instance property wrapper for this bindable property in just a moment. So now type of, and this is going to be a type i command for this property, and we need to bring in the namespace system windows input, and then we need the type of the of the owner of this property, it, and it will be this numeric validation behavior. And the default value, let's just say it's null, no problem. And then let's go ahead and create our property. So prop, and then this is going to be an i command. And the property is command. And here now in the name of we're grabbing this command. So if we ever want to change this property name, we get a clean refactoring instead of having a magic string here um, hard-coded. So for our getter, we are going to cast our bindable property to i command, and we're going to say get value, which is a method from bindable object get value and then we're going we need our bindable property so command property here we go and in our setter we're just, we are just going to call set value and again command property and value pretty standard way of defining um, bindable properties here so very very cool behaviors allow us to define these bindable properties now here in our unattached to I want to make sure that the binding context of the behavior is equal to the binding context of my entry. So bindable dot binding context. And we don't need this, um, this logic here anymore. And here, every time, so for this event, this text changed event, I want a command to be fired every time this event handler is fired. So I'm going to grab this command property that we have, just to make sure it's not null, dot execute. And for the command, for the parameter, we have a string, and we are just going to do e dot new, new text value here for our command. Now I have a view model here already, behaviors page view model, and here I have a, a static um, array of strings. I call it mentors: Tony Robbins, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Patrick B. David, and Albert Einstein. Um, and then I have an i command uh, public property here in, in my view model, and then. Um, here we're basically saying 
if it's um, if it's not null, just grab the field, and if it's null, just instantiate it. So here, our entry command, we say new command, and we say string. Here, we use this gen this generic uh, type here for the string because that's a command parameter. And then and then for here, we have the uh, the execute the actual uh, method or function that will be called, and it's this. Uh, um, met method called parse text and, and takes in this uh, command parameter um, the input of the of the entry and basically I'm just checking if if the text in that entry contains any of these names here in, uh, in my array of strings then I'm going to display an alert we're going to display an alert through our main page here and obviously this is not the view model's job to to do this um, but right now to keep this video simple just for illustrative purposes we're, we're, we are going to do it this way so we have our view model and if we go back to our XAML page we have our binding context for our page already to our instance of a behaviors page view model and then here for our entry for our binding context we're also making sure that we have that view model as our binding context so here for our command in our in our um, numeric validation behavior we're going to say binding to entry command and that's that's in in our in our view model this 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 entry command so we have our we have our command here and every time again the text the text changes every time this uh, text change of the entry it's it's called the command will be executed so let's go ahead and run this and let's let's see what we get So again, we have our label behaviors in Xamarin Forms in our entry. Now we can start typing, for example, we can say technical founders. Nothing is happening. There's no alert because we haven't used one of our names. Let's actually go ahead here so we, so we can see. And then here, here, if we say, for example, my mentor is Tony Robbins. I get an alert here. The command rec recognizes that this is one of our names and then fires uh, and then triggers this um, display alert. So same thing, we can also do it in, in other ways. So for example, my favorite physics mentor is Albert Einstein. Again, we have this, um, um, you know, this command firing properly in the, in, and ju just as we expect. So very cool. So an entry doesn't have a command property built in, but with behaviors, we are able to create a command where we didn't have one before and attach it to a and associate it with, a, with this text changed event or what the particular event that, that, that you would like. And again, we are effectively extending the behavior of an entry with this behavior of T class. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Also, please subscribe so you're the first to be notified when new video, videos come out. And I will see you next time.